everybody, it's your favorite Auntie Mo. We are back for another episode review of Black Ink Crew Chicago. This is season five, episode 20, period, and a sentence. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content, y'all. This is the season finale of Black Ink Crew Chicago. I don't know about y'all, but I'm so goddamn happy that the season is over with because quite frankly, the episodes began to get really boring as hell. It was harder and harder for me to do these reviews. I ain't gonna lie, no matter how much I had, you know, in my glass, it was still kind of hard to do the reviews just because the episodes were so boring. But I will say the season finale was very good. I was very pleased with it. Um, so y'all, let's just get right on into the review. Y'all, so everybody's waking up. It's the morning that everybody's supposed to go to the safari, and it's also the morning that Nick is supposed to um, propose to Charmaine, right? Now, we all know that Charmaine has pretty much already figured out that Nika's going to propose to her, right? But what she doesn't know is that Danielle was able to get her parents plus Nick's mom out there, right? And so they're going to come and they're going to surprise them later on at the safari. Now, um, back at the house as well, Four is saying that him and Sophia the body are closer than ever because he was happy to see how Sophia didn't let none of that shit phase her when Nikki popped up at the house the night before. He was saying that Sophia never let none of that ruin her mood. It didn't skip a beat with her. She was still cool with him because she understood that they had a mutual love and a mutual respect for one another and she wasn't trying to step on nobody's toes and get in the middle of nothing. So she respected that. He respects her even more from that and so he says that you know he, he he's ready to see you know what more it could be. Basically you know he likes her a whole lot more from that or whatever right? So they get to the safari whatever right and I ain't gonna lie the safari was lit. Now, it wasn't your average zoo or nothing like that that you go to. It was a safari where they had the animals that were actually up there close and personal with them. They could hold them. They could pet them. They could snuggle face to face and shit with them. It was real, real cute. But um, the animals seemed very calm, very subdued, uh, very tranquil probably maybe a little roofied up, a little high. The animals looked over this shit, y'all. I ain't gonna even lie. They brought these little cubs out or whatever, right? And so everybody snuggling up face to face with the cubs. I could see them cubs was over that shit. They was over it. Like they, they holding them up like they displays and you can see the look on them things face. They was like, ain't this... They just up looking like this. There's no movement, no nothing with them. They just sitting up there staring like this. Like y'all got me on display like a motherfucking animal and y'all got bitches rubbing their noses in my face get, the, get your ugly ass out my face put me down but let me go home why am i here why are you doing this to me that's exactly what them animals look like they didn't look comfortable they didn't look like they was enjoying it they looked over this shit completely over it. but it was a it was a cool ass safari i ain't gonna even lie I'd like to take my son to it, and I make sure when we go, y'all dope them mofos up with two tranquilizers, whatever they was on. Give two of them just so I can make the show show. I want them out when I go. Yeah, I want them to be, I want them to be able to open their eyes, but, you know, them poor things, they like they was over it. But you know what I thought was cute? Neek is so cute because he thinks that Charmaine has no idea whatsoever what's going on. He thinks that Charmaine, well, he thinks that Charmaine may have an idea because he's nervous, but he really thinks that Charmaine has no idea whatsoever and he's getting ready to propose to her. It's so cute, y'all. I thought that was really cute. There's a scene when Ryan is trying to get in contact with his sons, right? Now, you know, him and Rachel have been broken up. He's not living there at the house. Ryan was saying that, you know, it's, he was trying to call his son, but his son wasn't answering the phone, right? So they showed a clip of him and his son talking where he says that, you know, he has to work and he wants him to understand that no matter how, how hard he's working, that he loves them. He's always going to be there for him. Y'all, his son is so handsome. He's got hair like Sideshow Bob. I mean, thick, gorgeous hair. Looks just like his damn daddy. But, um... Ryan was saying that, you know, he misses being at home with his kids, that it's a blessing to be successful, but at the same time, you miss all of the important things with your kids. Like you, even when you do get home, you don't have the energy to hug on them and love on them and play with them like you want to because you so, you know, you steady out trying to be on the grind, trying to make a better life for them. And so I thought that was just a real cute, you know, little scene and whatever that, you know, he had trying to get in contact with his son or whatever. 
Y'all, so it's time for the proposal. And I'm sorry to say, but this proposal was very predictable. And it, it made it even more so not really like yay because Charmaine already knew what was gonna happen right so it was supposed to be where you know the parents you know the they bring a tiger out brought another little docile tiger out or whatever right and so the tour guide was like hey guys we got you know a really interesting animal over here let's go see this animal so they go walking off somewhere like I said they bring out another little docile ass Liger or whatever it was. He doped the fuck out. Like, Welcome Rufalin. <laughs> and bring a little animal out. Next thing you know, Charmaine's mom and dad and then Neek's mom pops out. And Charmaine is like, oh my god. god. Charmaine was doing the absolute most. I like Charmaine. I really do like Charmaine. But she's so loud and she does the most to where it's just like, girl, be quiet for a minute. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. So it's real, real cute or whatever, right? So Neek says some special things. Charmaine is just steady. Oh my God, what's happening, guys? What's going on? Being that she already knew, but she's trying to play it up or whatever, right? So he proposes. She says yes. Everybody hugs it out. It's real damn cute. Moving on from that. Y'all, so later on that night, they have a boat party, right? And this is when Bella got on my last ass nerd this is when bella this is you know i didn't feel bad for her because bella you wasn't even invited in the first place but then you show up and you show up with the shits like girl so they at the party they mix and mingling everybody having a good time right the parents is there neat kristen ass haitian mama there she ain't judging nobody looking down on nobody like everybody having a good ass time Neek does this speech to everybody where he's like, you know, thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for being a part of Charmaine's life because y'all are part of her life. Y'all are part of my life. And she means the world to me. You are my everything. I swear the only thing that matters, matters to me. Oh, baby, 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 baby. You know what I'm saying? Damn Bella ass. Gonna pop out the side and say, damn, I got one question. Charmaine, how much was that ring? Because that bitch is blinging. Everybody like Bella, baby. You don't ask that question, sweetheart. That's like asking a woman that ain't pregnant, how far along are you? That's like asking a cougar who clearly don't want nobody to know how old she is, how old are you? You don't ask nobody no question like that. She really did not know, and I kind of feel bad for her, so you can't get mad at her in a sense, but then again, it's like, damn, bitch, you ain't got a home training. You don't have to ask nobody that. Cause you know, it's like, you, you, she really didn't. But then again, it's like, did she really not know that that was not an appropriate question to ask? Or did you just know and you just didn't give a damn and you just gonna chop it up and just act like you super like you didn't know? Because if that's the case, then I'd feel bad for the way they snapped on you. Because they end up snapping back on her. Then she gonna say, after that, you know, everybody calm down from that. They, you know, she some, Charmaine somewhat got over that. Then this motherfucker Bella gonna say, Charmaine, you got hella dresses. Why did she put that dress back on? How come you didn't keep that other dress on? Bella, why do you care? Charmaine, that, oh my God, oh my God. I felt like I was there. I wanted to say, bitch, why does it matter? Who cares? Charmaine is like, look, you worry about you, your child, your clothes. I don't ask you why you wear the same thing over and over again. Like, why, 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 why? God, why? Yeah, why are you asking me that? Then the half gonna say, well, it wasn't like I brought up the rumor. Bitch, you just did. You just did. Danielle clearly sees that this is the time that I need to go ahead and get mama, mama, and daddy on up out of here because she probably finna go left. So Danielle, <clears throat> excuse me, Danielle takes the parents, takes them on back to their little old quarters or whatever where they were staying, tucks them on into the bed. Later on from that, everybody goes to like this little bar type thing, whatever, right? Bella ends up coming up to Charmaine and she tells Charmaine, I didn't mean to bring up the whole situation with you and Van. And Charmaine is like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, nobody's even asked me about that. You know, you know, yada, yada, yada. And so she was like, well, I was going to ask you. I wanted to ask you about it, but your man was right there. So Charmaine then sees that as being a good time to then bring up the rumor. She calls Van Don for Ryan. 
Ashley Bella, bartender. DJ, you over there. Hey, you. Y'all at the bus stop. Everybody, I want y'all to all come over here because I have something to say. You know, it's just been a lot going on. And so, I just have one question. Who all thinks I... Mm, man, she starts going in, y'all. I mean, going in. I'm never about, man, blah, blah, blah. And y'all already know Charmaine is loud, like so loud to us. Like, ah, oh, my ears, they bleeding. She was extra loud. Four and Danielle are trying to calm her down because they like, girl, okay, if it didn't happen, then stop. You ain't got to do all of this. You ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. If it didn't happen, she's like, what do you mean if it didn't happen? I didn't like that. Man's penis never entered my vagina. She just kept saying it. Kept saying it, right? Now, at this point is where it gets juicy, okay? So, production asks Don and his green screen I'm going to ask you straight up. Do you know if Don and Charmaine ever had sex? Now, Don is like, no. I never heard. I don't know that Van and Charmaine have ever had sex. Then the producer asks, well, did Charmaine suck Van's? Uh. Don said, yes. I may have heard that rumor. I was like, oh, God damn. Then production asked Ryan in his green screen. Ryan was straight up me. They was like, Ryan, do you know if Van and Charmaine had sex or do you know if Charmaine had an oral transaction with Van? Ryan was me. Look here. I don't want no smoke. I'm tired. I'm ready to go home. Now, at this point, Charmaine is steady going hard. She going off. I ain't never had sex with Van Black. She keeps saying it over louder and louder and louder each time she's saying it. Now, they bring in a guy named Manny, who's part of production, right? So they ask Manny, what happened? What do you know happened? Manny says, look, the night that we were all in Vegas, me, Van, and Charmaine were the only ones that were up. Last I seen, Van and Charmaine were up. They were up fucking with people, putting shoe towers on people when they sleep. Y'all, have y'all ever done that to somebody when they drunk before? Just piled a bunch of crap on them when they knocked out drunk sleep? It's funny. Do it. I know that it's very wrong, and I shouldn't promote nothing like that, but I've done that to many of people before when we've been sober, especially in college. Man, if any of my college mates are seeing this, we did that. Man, that was me. I did that. If you've ever been drinking with me, and you passed out, and you wake up and it's like some weird shit going on with you. Yeah, I did it. It's very fun. I'm not promoting people get drunk in the first place, but I'm saying if it just so happens, you know, it's your birthday or something like that, you turn up. It's your homegirl. It's your sister's birthday. It's your brother's birthday. Y'all turning up. He pass out. They pass out. You know what I'm saying? Do it. It's funny. It's so funny. Anyways, move right along from that. Manny then says after he left from there, maybe there could have been something physical that went on between Van and Charmaine. So I'm like, oh, God damn. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now he says you can always tell when Charmaine is lying because she gets a real high pitched voice. She gets loud and her eyes start, start bulging out of her head. And that's exactly what happened. That old petty ass production gonna play a clip of her at that moment yelling, going off, talking about she ain't never had sex with Ben. Like her eyes are bulging and she's loud as hell, right? Now at this point, Charmaine, oh, Charmaine is so blunt and it's so gross sometimes. Charmaine kept saying over and over again, I'm, I was on my period. I would never do that. I was on my period. I don't, I don't get this. I don't do this. I don't do this when I'm on my, she, she just kept saying it. It was, I get them every month, but I was just grossed out with her saying it. And she kept saying it like, girl, okay, we know you was on your period. All right. You ain't got to say that no more. Ugh. Ford's face was twisted. <laughs> <laughs> it was so damn funny. Every time she kept saying period, Four was like. That's exactly how I felt, Four. I was right there with you because I could just. Uh, it was gross. So production then asked Manny who started the rumor. Manny was hesitant for a second. And Manny was like, well, 
Dan told Don and Don told production. They then play a clip, an old clip, where you can see Don is talking to one of the girls from production, telling them something about to the fact of Charmaine having an oil transaction with somebody. Now, what they said exactly, I don't know. I missed it in my notes. If any of y'all watching this and y'all know exactly what they said, please put it down in the comments and let me know because I need to know. I just don't want to go back and watch that again. But it was something basically confirming exactly what was said. So, y'all... She's steady going hard, steady going hard. At this point, Neek comes in. And Neek is like, look, you know what I'm saying? We finna drop this. It is what it is. We finna leave this shit alone. We gonna dead it. I don't wanna hear nothing else about it. Neek was fed up with it. Neek had to come and drag her ass on up out of there. Had y'all let that girl go, she'd have kept on going all night. Talking about how she was on a pier and how no penetration happened between her and Ben. Now, she wasn't lying about neither one of those. No penetration happened. And yeah, she was on a cycle. But girl, they said she had an oil transaction. That's totally different. Y'all, so it's one week later, and they're back in Chicago. They meeting at a tea shop. Ryan is meeting up with Dawn. They in a tea shop or whatever, right? Dawn got his little manly turtleneck on with his little beard. He got beard, gang, gang. And he's sipping on a nice little warm cup of tea. Ryan come in with his... Hit him with a shoulder slick, willy-ass ponytail slick back. And so they're having up a little meeting or whatever, right? Ron tells Don that he wants to go ahead and close down the old 9 Mag. He don't want no old 9 Mag no more. He just wants a new 9 Mag. He don't want to put his time and his energy and have his name behind something that he doesn't want to be involved in in anymore. He feels like Charmaine and had a whole year to work on being a celebrity concierge, ain't bought in no celebrities or concierge, and Ben just got an attitude. And so he felt like he can't really talk with him. So going forward, he only wants to bring him and four. As for Charmaine, Bella, and Van, nice to know you, see you when I see you. He wants to bring Don on as a manager. And as his first duty as acting manager, he wants him to let Charmaine Bella and Ben know that their services will no longer be needed over at the new Nine Mag. So we're going to see how that goes, y'all. We're going to see how that goes. Later on, Ryan does this bomb-ass tattoo on one of his clients that he's been working on a sleeve of her. Or I want a sleeve so bad. But I work in the medical field, and I know the, the more times have changed, like now they're okay with piercings. Now they're okay with certain tattoos. But now... I'm just scared to get it. I already got seven tattoos and all them some bitches hurt like a motherfucker. So it's like I, I want to get a sleeve. I want a sleeve dedicated to something specific. But um, I just don't want to go through that pain. But anyways, I'm getting off subject. Focus, my focus. He did this fire ass piece adding on to this Japanese theme that she already has of the sleeve that's going on with her. He did it like right here in this little fold. It was bomb as hell. And it further solidified why I say Ryan is one of the best all time tattoo artists on reality TV thus far. That's what I say. Show me somebody else so we can go up to debate about it because I really do think Ryan is just that. He's, he's that nigga when it comes to them tattoos. Reality TV. Now I'm talking about overseas or over four, um, over oh shit, any other black tattoo artist. Hell, I think he's better than Kat Von D. I think he's better than a lot of these other tattoo artists that have had um, reality shows. That's just my opinion though. Don't come for me because I ain't sending for you. I'm just giving my opinion. That's it. We're going to move on from that. Y'all, so it's the night of Four's birthday party, y'all. Now, Four got on a big-ass poncho, parachute poncho. The shit was fly. He like a black rock star, you know what I'm saying? So I, I expect to see him in something fly like that. Everything he wears is something completely off the chain, and it's different. And I love it. Bella shows up there. Charmaine sees her and rolls her eyes because Charmaine's still in her feelings or whatever about Bella. And they trip, you know, that they had to the safari and about Bella running her damn mouth and all of that, right? Everybody kind of fucking with Charmaine on the cool. They keep asking Charmaine, where is Neek? Hey, yo, Charmaine, where Neek at? We ain't seen Neek. She letting him know, look, Neek is at home. We are fine. He's resting, making softwares, probably playing Fortnite, doing whatever he do. Don't worry about us. We good. We good. Ryan pulls Dawn to the side. He feels like right now is a good time that he needs to go ahead and address Charmaine and let Charmaine know about what's going to be happening moving forward with the new 9 Mag. 
So Don pulls Charmaine to the side, and so he kind of starts off slow, beating around the bush, and Charmaine could kind of see what was going on. So she was like, you know, cut to her, what's up? What's popping? What's good? It was, you know, what's good? So he lets her know what's good, you know, what's good, what's going on moving forward, that the old nine mag is closing down, and that, you know, moving forward, her concierge or celebrity concierge status is not needed with the new nine mag. Now she basically belittles what Don says, overlooks him, and starts yelling for Ryan. Ryan! Come here, Ryan. We having a conversation that's pertaining to you. Come on over here. I kept your seat warm. Ryan went over there and sat down. And he like, basically, it ain't like what I'm telling you finna be any different from what this man is telling you. So he looks at Don and he was like, so you talking about, you know, the celebrity status? He was like, yeah, okay, so you had a whole year to celebrity concierge. What celebrities have you concierge? So Charmaine is like, I got a whole list of people that could probably come in. He's like, yeah. Strike one. You got a list of people that probably could come in. You ain't had nobody came in in a whole year. So what's good? You ain't handling your, your end of the deal. She starts getting mad. At this point, Bella comes over because Bella peeps what's going on. Bella's like, oh, so what? I ain't got no job. Charmaine, fuck you and what you going through. I ain't got no job. She starts going off on Ryan and Dunn really more so Ryan. She's like, me and Aaliyah ain't done nothing. Aaliyah meaning her daughter. We ain't done nothing. You mad at Charmaine for what she's done. You mad at four for, I mean, um, Van for what he's done. But I got to be somebody that got to pay for what they done. That ain't fair. Yada, yada, yada. Now, four is sitting back over there in the cut. He like, you know what? Just like what happened between Van and uh, <laughs> Charmaine. I knew about this right here. I knew what was going to happen. I'm thank thankful that Ryan still offered me my position over at the new 9 Mag, and that's why I'm going to be going to. And uh, it's getting a little bit hot up in here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and chunk the deuce, and I'm going to peace out. And that's what he did. He was like, I don't want no parts of whatever this is that's going on right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get the fuck on up out of here. Now, at this point, Van comes over because Van is like, hey, hey, he sees that Bella's upset. He sees Charmaine is upset. So he's like, you know, what I miss, what's going on? Charmaine, loud ass Charmaine. Uh, Ryan is shutting down the shop and he only taking Van and um, Don and Ford with him. We ain't got no job, yada, yada, yada. Now, Van really don't give a damn. Van already got his Chicago real shit going on anyway. He's kind of laughing it off. You can tell he's pissed about it because he's like, whenever you a puppet or you a pawn in the game that Ryan plays, you can expect the unexpected. But you can tell he's pissed off about that. That shit kind of got him in his feelings for real. So next thing you know, Van is like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm finna be up out of here. Y'all let me know what y'all finna do, but uh, I'm finna peace out. He laughs it off. He ends up leaving from there. Bella pissed off. At this point, Bella once again pisses me off for the final time. This heifer gets mad, start knock shit over. Knock drinks over, kicked over a whole birthday cake. I wanted to come through, I wanted to come through the screen on all you can. I wanted to grab her heart, clean up out of her body. Bitch, you don't throw no whole goddamn cake on the ground. Do you? She gets mad. She storms off after she done messed up the church's money, got cake and drinks and shit all over the place. She gets mad. She storms off. At this point, Charmaine is mad. She boo-hoo crying. She cusses Don and Ryan out. Tells them, kiss my da 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 She's mad. She call, um, she leaves up out of there. She goes to the house. Soon as she goes in the house, or soon as she pulls up to the house, Neek is right there at the gate to greet her. Now, while y'all was over there talking all that crap about Neek, he was right there to greet that girl soon as she got in from the house. I'm just saying, no, it could have been all set up for the camera, but it looked good. Um, after that, everybody was basically reflecting on the year that they've had, um, how far they've come, how they're looking forward to the new 9 mag, now that the old 9 mag is closed, and basically, that was the end of the episode, that was the end of the season from there, y'all. Again, I am so glad that this season is over with, because it was long and it was boring as hell, but, um, this last season finale thing, God gave us something to talk about, because other than that, you know what I'm saying, I ain't had a video this long for Black Ink Crew, 
Chicago in a minute. So I hope y'all enjoyed the review. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Oh, by the way, Black Ink Crew New York and um, Black Ink Crew Compton is starting next week. I know for sure I'm going to do Black Ink Crew Compton because that's something new and that's something fresh. New York, I got to see how the first two episodes go. And I'll let y'all know about that. But um, y'all have a good night. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.